What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and today has been huge. We got our official first look at Call of Duty 2022 which we now know and can officially say is going to be called Modern Warfare 2. We're going to be talking about the teaser, people playing early, and even more. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and make sure notifications on to stay up to date with everything going on in Cold War Year 2, Warzone, Modern Warfare 2, and any other future Call of Duty as well. And as you can go ahead and see, in less than an hour, Infinity Ward's tweet on the logo reveal for the new Modern Warfare is already one of the most liked Call of Duty logo reveal tweets in history and immediately overtook the entire reveal for Vanguard which was last year that logo that teaser trailer just look at the likes look at the fact that Modern Warfare 2 is trending it's going ballistic worldwide and rightfully so right this is going to be the sequel to the best-selling Call of Duty in franchise history also notice how there's multiple hashtags being used for this game there's the number two the Roman numeral two just MW2 and it looks like it'll be a situation like Black Ops 2 Red Dead Redemption uh, Last of Us 2 where on the game cover when you buy a physical copy or see the application on your screen it has a Roman numeral 2 but whenever we talk about it or text about it we usually use the number 2 if that makes any sense but I guess you could say season 3 is technically already dead at least for Vanguard and that's why I was saying on the podcast recently that the true start of season 3 is May 11th Operation Monarch over in Caldera because a majority of season 3 if not all of it is really centered around the Godzilla versus Kong event and how that'll impact Warzone whereas Vanguard at least right now is only getting two multiplayer maps a trophy system and some weapons and only one of those MP maps is playable right now people are already burnt out of that so Activision was like let's get the energy back up this week and actually start revealing our next Call of Duty that's releasing presumably this fall but looking at the teaser trailer itself now it has a green theme I definitely love that obviously we're reminiscing on the original Modern Warfare 2 2009 which also had had a theme with the color green I think it was originally going to be blue for this sequel but they changed their mind on that and that's cool because I'm absolutely digging this logo I mean seriously I'm in love with this look it's probably the cleanest looking logo we've gotten for a COD game in a while and it's probably the best design they could have went with I'm sure they could have just done MW with the two next to it but no in between the W and the M I love the two Roman numerals sitting right there and you're also probably aware that Ralph's Valve the gaming scooper who's been talking all about this game and hyping it up did claim originally that April 30th would be something and then May 30th would be the full reveal and what do you know today's the 28th and we got something right a little bit earlier than expected here with this official reveal and we can also see in slow motion the task force 141 logo in this little teaser trailer we can also hear the distinct sound that we all know and love from booting up modern warfare 3 in 2011 you guys know exactly what sound I'm talking about and I mean task force 141 is definitely gonna be the focus of this game it was set up at the end of the first one and we now have have our full crew ready to go. We have Price, Soap, Ghost, Gaz, and a couple of other new characters that are also part of the squad. Alex. I mean, it's going to be fantastic to see what they do with this set of characters. Now, in the teaser trailer itself, there are also specific coordinates that people did find, and you can barely see them, but upon putting all the numbers together, it does lead us to Singapore, and this image here of three towers over in Singapore, which may end up being one of the campaign missions. I don't think this is for Warzone 2 or the next big Battle Royale map. I know that's been rumored to take place in a desert somewhere. So if we can guess anything about what this means, maybe a campaign mission involves us going to Singapore and doing something really cool in a tall building. We have gaming scooper Tom Henderson claiming that he has seen an image of a soldier kind of coming down a building or something, which is very, very similar to an official piece of concept art from Call of Duty Ghost, where there was indeed a mission where we were coming down a building. So maybe that's where the inspiration comes from here with these coordinates. Now with the last Modern Warfare game, we did get a bit of an audio teaser similar Similar to this one, which then had a date at the end telling us when to expect a full-fledged global reveal. We didn't get that today, so what we can safely assume is that we may get more marketing or even a full-fledged teaser trailer in the next week or two tops, which gives us a full date of when to expect actual gameplay, the storyline cinematic. They're probably going to want to do the full global reveal after May 11th Operation Monarch. I highly doubt they're going to want to do everything before that event and take away the spotlight from this Godzilla Kong event they're hyping up. So with that in mind, we could safely assume that May 30th, or at least maybe even a week before that, should be when we see an actual full-fledged reveal trailer. But I theorized about this before. Season 3 may not even have a reloaded. I mean, hell, Vanguard's only rumored to get five full seasons. 
so they're probably gonna want to save a bunch of content for season four and then season five being the last if that's the case so after operation monarch maybe a good week or two after that i think the dust will settle activision will go full force into marketing the next modern warfare but something really important i wanted to bring up which you might not have thought about is regardless of your opinion of modern warfare 2019 or infinity ward as a whole you have to admit that the first game in 2019 was very lucky and came out with very convenient timing not only the pandemic and the lockdowns more people sitting at home and actually playing call of duty but also the idea that it was the first game to introduce the free dlc model right no more season pass we have the new battle pass progression system that was introduced we of course had warzone popping out a couple of months after that and so many things went right and it just were perfect in terms of timing to ensure the success of that game not saying that game wasn't great if you guys think that i'm not saying that the name itself also didn't really sell the game without even having to do much but what i'm saying is the quality of the game in 2019 wasn't necessarily why the game was that successful and what do you know with this second modern warfare coming out i'm looking forward to it i'm intrigued to see a full reveal but also remember it's also coming out at a very convenient time and what is that the pandemic is technically over more people are going to work now which means they have more money possibly to spend on microtransactions or games altogether but we're also at a very very low period for the franchise right with vanguard so this game's gonna pick everything back up and quote unquote revive the community we were just fine with cold war there were no issues at all and if anything we were at a peak for the player count the microtransactions being bought for multiplayer for zombies the warzone integration with rebirth for dance Gate 4 ended up bringing activision the best numbers they've ever seen with battle pass purchases and player bases i mean now modern warfare 2 has the responsibility of bringing us out of the trenches which we're in right now with vanguard and caldera so again convenient timing for this game to come out so regardless of how good the game ends up being it's gonna be a banger regardless not only because of the name itself being so nostalgic but also because of the timing with the franchise now over the last couple of days you guys have probably seen reports and twitter posts instagram posts of nfl players being able to take a first look at modern warfare 2 all of us out there speculated that they were actually playing the game like a campaign demo or some early build of multiplayer but based on some of the recent posts from certain players it's made out to be that they're actually just taking a first look at the game but are not playing it they're instead playing vanguard multiplayer for whatever reason so there's that and that lines up with a report from rouse valve not too long ago that reliable southern california residents and influencers are being given invite tokens to play modern warfare 2 so maybe there are some nfl players that have played we just haven't heard or seen anything about that yet or there's other influencers that were unaware of they may have signed ndas and secretly have already played modern warfare 2 early if they live in california i mean lots of possibilities here but without a doubt if leaks pop up or early gameplay this is gonna be why right there's definitely people out there looking at or even playing the game right now now i know this is kind of around the time when call of duties get revealed or teased anyway it just still feels really early because of just how lackluster vanguard has been it's like we're still waiting for that game to get better but it's not and probably never will so the fact that they're already showing off the game they're presenting it as early as they can it also lines up with the rumor we heard a while ago that it was in an alpha stage a little while ago which means they were really ahead of schedule with the release of the game so we could end up seeing an open alpha very early this summer now i just have to bring up this tweet from charlie intel right how many people are going to buy the old modern warfare 2 as a christmas gift this year instead of the new one without realizing and yeah the soccer moms and the boomer parents that uh, get a request from their kids to buy the new Modern Warfare might end up doing that on accident So let me know how you feel about that down below in the comments. I know it gets confusing We had COD 4 Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare Remastered 2016, Modern Warfare 2019 And now we have Modern Warfare 2, the second one, because we had another one of those over a decade ago So it's gonna be a bit messy, but I'm sure just like with the first Modern Warfare People will very quickly tell the difference between the new one and the old one Not even because of the name itself, but just look at the gameplay and look at the category over on YouTube to gaming or twitch now i'm also curious what's going on with the collector's edition of this new modern warfare if there will even be one i mean the pandemic technically is over but there are still quite a few companies around the world and parts of the industry that are still suffering because of the ramifications of what the lockdowns did so maybe they still aren't capable of putting out a collector's edition this time around we know black ops cold War actually was going to have one and images of the concept art put together for it did pop up a couple of months ago which i made a full video about because i was always thinking i'm like hey the trailer 
Collector's Editions have been spot on the last couple of years. I mean, Black Ops 4's was received pretty weirdly because it was for the Chaos Story, but other than that, we've always had some banger Call of Duty Collector's items, and I was really sad to see the Cold War of all games put a stop to that tradition, and MW 2019 brought out the Night Vision goggles again, so I'm wondering if the second game coming out will offer anything, and it's also worth theorizing what possible pre-order bonuses could be if they stick with the new system, which is all digital, by the way. You have an Ultimate Edition, a Crossing Edition, a Standard Edition. I mean, it's cool. It's something, at least, if you want to spend a little bit of extra money, but I've always preferred getting physical copies of my games, especially physical collector's items, whether it's a statue, whether it's a box, a fridge, an RC car. You know the vibe. But this may end up being one of the most unique Call of Duty campaigns we also ever get, considering it technically has to set up nearly a full sequel because it's going to have potentially 12 seasons of support with two years of DLC. That means whatever cinematic story we get in the post-launch, hopefully it's going to be a banger to warrant having, what, 12 seasons total, if not more, maybe a little bit less? It'll be different from previous years where, yeah, they set up a post-launch narrative that lasts only six seasons. This one's gonna be different. If it's 12, then it's technically gonna be setting up like a Modern Warfare 3, but not a game. It'll just be a story that's told over a 24-month period, so to speak. Now, not much is really known about the story of this game other than the rumor about Colombian drug cartels, maybe even a Menendez tie-in. We have a lot of Black Ops connections with... Reaper 3 and Force, that could also play a part in Modern Warfare 2, and I'm really looking forward to see what crossover potential this game will end up having, but also a very important update that definitely affects COD. We have confirmation this morning before the Modern Warfare 2 reveal that Activision Blizzard stockholders have approved the proposed Microsoft transaction. Congress has not approved it just yet, so things could still go south, although it's unlikely, but this is a great step in the right direction, right? If the government says no, then I think they're screwed, but right now, it does look like the shareholders at least are on board with getting this going, getting the ball going, and hopefully seeing a full shift and transition in power by late 2023. Now, Charlie Intel also reported that some are expecting resistance from the United States, Europe, and China regulatory groups, so we'll have to wait to see how this ends up playing out. But yeah, without the regulatory approvals, it's not really set in stone, but this is still some type of good news and a glimmer of hope that they'll be answering to Phil Spencer in the future and not Bobby Kotick. But going back to my point from earlier, the convenient timing of everything right now, it's insane. They're about to drop probably what's going to be the best-selling Call of Duty yet again, and they're doing that just before they end up selling over to Microsoft, so... A lot of people have golden parachutes, a lot of the higher-ups and executives that unfortunately have beaten the system and have done some disgusting things they may not ever get held accountable for, they're going to be walking away with a fat bag of cash. And here's the thing, we kind of have to choose, right? Have them stay in power, make some money, or make some money and leave. And I think we all know what the right answer is there. Now, also an interesting report from some very spicy individuals on Twitter, we have some type of references to what could in fact be a cancelled Attack on Titan event. Not sure what the event would have been for Vanguard and Warzone, but there's a finishing move apparently tied to that event, which is now being reused. So this obviously lines up with plenty of the other evidence we've already looked at in previous videos, such as a full-fledged St. Patrick's event. There were some bundles, mastercrafts, calling cards, finishers. There is a lot of content that was supposed to release for Vanguard and Caldera that just hasn't. It got scrapped, and you guys obviously know why, so it would not surprise me if more was planned for Attack on Titan, but maybe the bundles didn't sell as well, or they said, hey, this game's dying, it's not doing great, there's no point in investing extra resources into an event that nobody really cares about. Godzilla vs. Kong, different story. It's a much bigger scale. It's going to be cross-marketing their new movie, I believe. And it's obviously in Warzone, not Vanguard. So, you know it's going to be a banger. But figured I'd bring that up real quickly for those that were interested. Raven Software then came out of left field with a report that Season 4 will feature the biggest shift in Caldera that takes into account player feedback on the map and even more. And it has me thinking, right, what will happen to Warzone 1? Like I brought up in previous Modern Warfare videos, what will happen to Warzone 1 when Modern Warfare 2 comes out this fall? I mean, there's definitely... Definitely a reason to theorize Warzone 2 comes out alongside MW2, but I think we all know Activision wants the spotlight to be on their premium title, MW, that they know could sell pretty well without having Warzone take over the spotlight for too much, so it may actually kill Warzone for a couple of months, but then when Warzone 2 comes out in presumably March 2023, it'll pick things right back up for Battle Royale and actually move the genre farther for Call of Duty without really impacting Modern Warfare 2 that much. So that's probably what'll happen, but I'm assuming Call of 
Caldera really isn't going anywhere for the foreseeable future. Now, last and definitely not least, we also have one more mention from Raven that they're still investigating a complicated issue about the 120 hertz problem for Xbox Series consoles, and they do not have a timeline for a fix. Now, it's not confirmed, but it's pretty heavily implied that this new Modern Warfare will come out on all platforms, PS4, Xbox One, and I get it, that's fine, not everybody out there can afford a PC, not everybody out there can find next-gen consoles, so I get why there's a desire to have new releases on previous generation platforms, I really get it, but... Modern Warfare 2 may end up being available for everything, but I'm just hoping Warzone 2 isn't, because I think it'll really be held back if it is. And if there's any Call of Duty that really rips off the band-aid and says, okay, it's PS5 and Xbox Series X and PC exclusive, it'll likely be Treyarch's next Black Ops in 2024, because by that point, PS4 and Xbox One will be over a decade old and likely won't be able to handle the crazy ambitious ideas that Treyarch probably even has in store for that release. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave your thoughts down below in the comments section. What are your thoughts on our first teaser reveal of Modern Warfare 2? Thoughts on the logo, the storyline, and also what are your thoughts on the proposed acquisition of Activision Blizzard, which has been approved by shareholders. Really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out, everybody.